Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Krishna, I am Rajar Shidas. Welcome to Hare Krishna today. In today's program, we would speak about the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna's appearance and activities in this world. Now, sometimes we would show some animated description of Krishna's appearance and activities, and someone may conclude that this is some activity that is not very important maybe for kids so even though in this age we may use some technology animated movies to show Krishna's pastimes we need to hear a bit about the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna and his power and also the powerful demons that he was interacting with 5,000 years ago. So let us look at a description of the Supreme Lord. He by definition in the Vedas is Janmadi Asetaha, him from whom everything comes. Yes, everything in this world, all elements, all power, everything comes from the Supreme Lord. He is described as Bhagavan, the possessor of all opulences, meaning that he has all beauty. Is there any wonder Krishna means all attractive? He has all beauty, all knowledge, as you would get from Bhagavad Gita. All strength, yes, he has all wealth, all renunciation. Of course, we said he's all beautiful all attractive. So he has all renunciation, he has all fame. So 5,000 years ago when Krishna was present on the earth planet, the demons who Krishna contended with, he fought daily. Even as a little boy in Vrindavan, powerful demons, they were not like the demons in this age of Kali Yuga. They had great mystic powers. They could transform themselves into so many different forms. Kansa was not ordinary. He had defeated all the powerful demons and mystics of the time and made them all his servants. Here's a description from Gaga Samhita of Indra along with his powerful demon allies going up to the heavenly regions to at attack Lord Indra, the king of the heavenly planets. Aided by Chanura, Mushtika, Arista, Shala, Toshala, Keshi, Pralamba, Baka, Dwivida, Trinavarta, Agha, Kuta, Narakasura, Bana, Shambara, Vyoma, Dhenuka, and Vatsa, he besieged the city of Amaravati. That's the city of Indra. So Danavir Goswami comments, Here is the ultimate all Asura, all demon lineup, with Kansa as their quarterback. The excursion to Amaravati is the capital city of the heavenly planets and residence of Lord Indra. Persons who eat meat are generally not qualified to reach the higher planetary systems reserved for pious persons. 
the meat-eating demon Kalayavana. Kalayavana's name is absent here. The other sinful demons were qualified to visit heaven because they had pleased important demigods such as Shiva and Brahma. So here we are getting some idea of the powerful demons. They went up to the heavenly planet. So if you are seeing names here of demons that Krishna fought and killed like Vyoma Asura, Dhenukasura, Vatsa, don't think it is some trivialized matter. They went up to the heavenly regions to fight with the Devatas. They were very powerful. So, when we're speaking about Krishna's appearance and activities on the earth planet 5,000 years ago, even though we may show some animated movie about Krishna's pastimes, in no way does it mean it is some trivialized activity for kids. No. These are very, very powerful demons. Some of them Krishna killed 5,000 years ago and you can learn the gravity of the situation by reading Srimad Bhagavatam in which it is, detailed descriptions are given. So Krishna being Bhagavan, the all-powerful, when he was present on, in the world 5,000 years ago, his purpose was to set some precedence for people in the future that they would recognize the power of God. Because generally in this world, people read scriptures where they have very little vague descriptions of God. Very vague descriptions. Why? A lot of the scriptures are meant for lower class people less intelligent people. Maybe they're just interested in sense gratification, karma kand, going to heavenly planets, or, so, or they may be mlechas and yavanas, untouchables, desert people. So what can you teach them about God? So God would send his servants to help the mlechas and yavanas to gradually elevate them. So when Krishna came 5,000 years ago, he wanted to actually demonstrate his supreme power. Why? Just to assert himself as being very powerful? No. For our benefit, why? He says, Janma karma cha me divya. If you understand my janma, my appearance in this world, and my karma, my activities that are divya, divine. Then tiyatva deham, when you give up this deha, this body, he says you will not take birth in this world again, but you will attain my eternal abode. If we know the power, the greatness of God, what does that mean? We will surrender to God and become his servants. We will not be worshipping the so-called leaders in this age of Kali Yuga. People in this age of Kali Yuga, what do they worship? They spend their time listening, looking at, glorifying mortal beings who are running straight into debt. Yes. Some powerful movie star, some wrestler, some politician, some sportsman. This is what we become preoccupied with in this age of Kali Yuga. Why? Because we are in ignorance of God, Bhagavan, the all-powerful supreme being. And we have often mentioned that because of ignorance of God, the all-powerful supreme person, we create, when we are disappointed with all these mortal beings, what we do is we create all types of fictitious characters, as you would read about, or you will look at in movies. Spider-Man, Superman, six million dollar man. If man don't work, you make woman, Wonder Woman. 
But the idea is that it is all done because the soul has some need, some urge to acknowledge, to recognize the Supreme Person, Bhagavan. But because of ignorance of Bhagavad, the scriptures that describe the details of God, then we have to create fictitious things. But it doesn't do anything for us to elevate us. Neither does it save us from death. But Krishna says in the Gita that many, many persons in the past, by having knowledge of me, by developing love for me, they became free from material existence. So that's the benefit we can derive from actually knowing God, hearing about God. So when Krishna spoke the Gita, he described his power. He says, Mataha parataram na anyat. Kinchirasti Dhananjaya, my dear Arjuna, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. No truth superior to me. He had just described the powerful elements of this world, earth, water, fire, air, ether. Then he described conscious beings, the jivas, their combination, spirit soul and a body made up of matter. So Krishna says, whatever you see, you see in this world, it is a combination of matter and spirit. He said, but you should know that there is nothing, matter or spirit, till being souls who are equal to me or above me. There is no truth superior to me. Krishna declares, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo. I am the source of everything material and spiritual. He says, everything emanates from me. And Buddha Bhava Samanvita, the wise who knows this perfectly, engages in my devotional service and they worship me with all their hearts. He says, Buddha Bhava. They're intelligent, they're wise. Those who don't recognize Krishna as the all-powerful and source of everything, they're not described as wise, they describe otherwise. Mudha, foolish, Naradhama, lowest among mankind, Asurbhav, possessing a demoniac nature. So Krishna in Bhagavad Gita is explaining his power. Arjuna, he heard Krishna displaying, he heard Krishna describing his opulences. But then Arjuna said, my Lord, I would like to see how you have expanded yourself and how you are sustaining the entire universe, millions of gods, all the elements. So Krishna said, don't worry. Divyam, I'll give you divine eyes. He says, you behold this form. Whatever you desire to see from the past and the present or in the future, you behold at once in this form. So the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, 10th chapter, the opulence, the greatness of the Supreme. But the 11th chapter, his display of the Virat Rupa, the universal form. He, he, he'd manifest this form so that Arjuna would behold everything in existence. All his multifarious energies Krishna revealed to Arjuna. So, the point is that when we hear from Krishna in Bhagavad Gita about his power, his greatness. When we read in Bhagavad about his activities, how he demonstrates these activities. Now Krishna spent 125 years on the earth planet. But as soon as he appeared in the world, just as a baby, he killed the powerful which Yogini Putana. She was very powerful. But Krishna 
killed her. Now Kansa, hearing that prophecy that the eighth child of Devaki would kill him, he foolishly concluded that I would get all my powerful allies. I attacked the Devatas and defeated them. I defeated all powerful persons. I'll use my powerful allies to conquer death. This is the nature of a foolish and demoniac person. He thinks that he can conquer over God. So Kanka, Kansa employed all these powerful forces, these powerful demons. Putana had two brothers, the powerful Bakasura, who assumed the form of a heron, huge bird, and attacked Krishna. Then the other brother, he would take the form of a huge snake, Aghasura. So he came there and in disguise tricked Krishna's friends, the cowherd boys, to enter into his mouth that appeared to be like a huge mountain cave. But Krishna is always displaying that he is the protector of his devotees. When he says in the Gita, Mame kam sharanam braja, that you surrender on to me, Ma shuchaha, have no fear, don't worry. He's demonstrating in Bhagavad Gita and in his pastimes that he is the all powerful. He can destroy the most powerful demons. In terms of strength, Krishna, he destroyed the pride of the king of heaven, Indra. Even the devatas are bewildered by his power. Lord Brahma, when he heard about Krishna's power, this little boy in Vrindavan had killed this powerful Aghasura, this powerful demon in the form of a serpent. Brahma doubted that that is the Supreme Lord. He thought that is some powerful mystic. I'll go to earth and demonstrate and show my mystic power. But when he came to demonstrate his power before Krishna, he was totally bewildered because Krishna expanded himself. Brahma stole all the boys and all the calves and by his mystic power put them to sleep. But Krishna, wanting to please his devotees in Vrindavan, this is his purpose of coming. Paritranaya sadhunam. He'll protect and give pleasure to the devotees. So they were so much attracted to Krishna that Krishna, for one whole year on the earth planet, while Brahma had taken away his friends and the calves, Krishna expanded himself exactly as each boy and as each calf and went into the homes and for one whole year Krishna stayed. He dwelled there and they were all amazed. They couldn't understand why they had so much attraction for these boys, their own boys, as they would normally have for Krishna. The cows displayed this amazing attraction for their calves. So for one whole year, Krishna demonstrated his wonderful power. 
But after a moment of Brahma's time, when he returned, he was bewildered. He saw Krishna with all his friends and all the calves continuing his pastimes as usual. And he was totally bewildered and confused as to what had happened. And then he came to his senses and he came and he offered prayers to Krishna. And he said, Atapite Deva Padambujadweya Prasara Le Shanu Grihita Ebahi Janati Tatvam Bhagavan Mahimnu Nachanya Eko Pichiram Vichinvan. My dear Lord, if a person is favored, Prasada Lesh Anu, Anu means Atam. If a person if is favored by a tiny drop of your mercy, Prasad Alesh Anu, Grihita Evahi, then Janati Tatvam, then he can understand the truth about you and your activities. Brahma said to Krishna, Jananta eva janantu kimbahuktyana me prabhu manaso vapuso vacho vaibhavang tava gochara. My Lord, there are many persons who say they know everything about you. Let those fools speak that way. As far as I am concerned, you are beyond the comprehension of my body, my mind, and my words. Brahma confessed. The Supreme Lord Krishna, Brahma says, Ishvara Paramaha Krishna Sachirananda Vigraha, that Krishna, your form is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. Anadi Radi the Govinda, you are anadir, you have no origin. An Adi you are the origin of everything. And Sarva Karana Karanam, you are the cause of all causes. This is Krishna's position. So, the Devatas, 5,000 years ago, they all came to earth at different times. Indra, he was proud of his position. He couldn't recognize Krishna as the absolute truth. So Krishna arranged that all the powerful gods, Indra, Brahma, Shiva, they were all bewildered. They were all his servants. They submit to him. Ekale Ishwara Krishna Arasabha Bhritya. There is one master, Krishna. Arasabha Bhritya. Everyone else are his servants. So Jivira Swarupai Krishna Nitya Das. The Swarup, the constitutional position of all beings, Nitya Krishna Das. In the course of people's life, they may engage in all types of religious activities, do this, do that, worship this one, that one. But at the time of death, Krishna is called Mukunda. He is the giver of liberation. So, people would now look for the favor of God, the source of all beings. Mamai Vangsha Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatan. He says, All souls, all beings, Mama Eva Angsa, they belong to me. So when Krishna declares in the Gita, Sarva Dharman, Parityaja, abandon all varieties of religiosity, while souls are in this world, for them to not remain demons and atheists and godless. There are all types of religiosity, worshipping millions of God to get this, to get that, to get material resources. There are religious practices to gradually elevate people from the mode of ignorance, mode of passion, to gradually bring them closer to spirituality. So Krishna says, Sarva Dharman, Parityacha, give up all these varieties of religiosity. Mam ekam sharanam vraja, you surrender, mam ekam unto me. Aham tvang sarva pap, I shall free you from all sins. Ma don't worry, don't fear. 
So the purpose of Bhagavad Gita is to wake us up. It is meant for people who are intelligent and philosophically inclined, not blind religiosity or just some religious sentiment and ignorance. No. It is meant to understand God, the source of everything, to know Him, and by knowing Him, we can go back home to the eternal world, the kingdom of God. So we have these beautiful animated Krishna movies that are meant to attract people in general, even the children. People in general, they can understand something about Krishna, the all-attractive person. And by knowing Krishna, by understanding Him, by developing our love for Him, Krishna says, you can come back to me in the spiritual world and that's our swarup, that's our constitutional position where we are entitled to eternal life in the spiritual world. I'm Rajarshi Das saying Hare Krishna and do join us again next week for another presentation. Hare, 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 Hare,